Hello and welcome to Springboard Media's Active Tips. This is part two for Active Inspire in the Math Classroom. In part one, we looked at some different ways that you could incorporate Active Inspire tools into your math classroom. In part two, we're going to take a look at handwriting and shape recognition, as well as creating tool tips and some other ideas for how you can hide and reveal. Another aspect of Active Inspire that you can use and utilize in your math classroom is the idea that you can create different layers. Up on the screen right now is text, annotations, and a shape. So if I were to clear annotations, all that information is gone. This way you can make a template that you use over and over again. Perhaps I just want to get rid of the measurements and leave the letters so that I can create multiple rounds with the same picture. I can actually convert this handwriting from an annotation into an object. And to do so, I'm going to select around that object, just so I make sure I have all the parts of that letter covered. If I'm standing at the board, I'm actually going to click the button on the pen. If I'm at my computer, I'm going to right click or control click. So in this menu, you can see I have convert to text. So this will now convert this to text. If I clear the annotations now, you can see that the letter would stay. So you could do this to all the letters that you had written, and then you could keep them as objects on your page. Then you can change the values of the numbers or where the variable was for the next problem. Active Inspire also includes shape recognition, which can be really helpful in math. When you're drawing shapes freehand, it's going to recognize them and print them as the closest regular shape. You can add this into your toolbar by going to File, Settings, or View, Customize, and going in through Command, and I'm going to add Shape Recognition to my toolbar. Now when I click on Shape Recognition, and I begin to draw a triangle. You can see my triangle is not exact. However, it kind of evened it out to the best degree possible by making all the lines straight. Shape recognition can be really helpful when you're making graphic organizers, and it can also be really helpful when you're working with the grids in the background. Just like with handwriting recognition, shape recognition actually turns your annotations into objects. So now you could use the pen tool to write over them or add information to them. And then if you clear the annotations, it's going to keep the shapes there but erase what you put over them. This way you can create different stages of your flip chart and use that same template or the shapes again and again. One tip is that when you draw shapes with shape recognition or with annotations, it might be sometimes hard to click on them to edit them. If you click inside, you should see the marquee handles. And now if I open my property browser, I can see the outline and I can change this to now be a dashed line that's thicker and even a different color. I can also add a fill to this, even if when I drew it on the board, I didn't connect all the corners. Another tool that you can use in Active Inspire in your math classroom is to align things. And to do so, I'm going to select two different objects, and I'm going to click on the menu bar. And I'm choosing Align, and I want to align their centers. I can also align them to the right of a box, to the top, to the center of their y-axis, to their width, or to the left. So this can be helpful, especially if you're using virtual manipulatives and students move everything around the page, you can select them all and choose a line to put them back in the right place. Of course, you can also access all the math tools right here in your toolbar. Your protractor, ruler, set square, compass, dice roller, and calculator. And you can actually customize each of these tools in your settings. So if we go into our settings,
We can customize all our map tools tool color and tool text color as well as their level of translucency. You can also create labels or tooltips that pop up over images, text, or objects. So for example, what do you think this is the net of? This is the net of a soccer ball. This is the net of a cube. So how did I do this so that they popped up over here? In your browsers, you want to go to the property browser. You can't see this right now because I don't have anything selected. Let me click on this image. So now my property browser changes completely. And I have this option for label. When I click on label, I can see there's a caption that I've added, the font size, the font color, the font, as well as the outline and the background color of that tooltip. If I put this on always on, it would always stay there. If I put this on tooltip, I could now have students guess, and then when they move the mouse or the pen over this object, the tooltip would pop up. Thanks for watching part two of Active Inspire in the Math Classroom. Check out our website for more information about our professional development courses and workshops.